welcome everybody, a special welcome again to the members. Um, today it's a bit more light, so you will actually be able to see the votes today. Um, we might get a bit of a storm going as well, so it's a very exciting Zoom cooking. Uh, also a big welcome to my clients and all of my staff, the CYC staff that's watching tonight. And uh, of course, a big thank you again to the Cushion Yacht Club of Australia for hosting this uh, fun event. We are um, tonight, uh, I'm tonight cooking with you uh, private lux, which is one of my signature dishes. I've done it with Mabel Mara many times on Fruit Safari. And, uh, and a lot of you have seen it on the menu uh, here at the club in very uh, different forms and shapes. And I'm gonna show you some of those uh, tonight. So what we're gonna start with is, uh, we're gonna prepare the salmon. So this is uh, a salmon fillet in the recipe card that I sent out. It said 1.5 kilo. This is slightly smaller. I like it to be between one kilo and 1.5 kilo. I think you get the best result. It cures more evenly. Uh, if you have a really fat fillet, uh, you kind of sometimes get it very rawish at close to the skin. Uh, with a fillet this size, it's about two centimeters thick, you will get a very evenly cure. So what we're gonna start with, we're just gonna check that there's no bones left in there. There is not. Then we're just gonna cut off the top up here where the top fin is. You can kind of, with your thumb, just press it a bit aside and then just let the knife down here. Then just cut the top off here where you have the bones in. I always cut the tail bits off because it gets a bit over cured compared to the rest of the salmon. And it's just a shame because it will get too salty. Uh, so I always cut it off. Uh, use it for rissoles, use it for sushi. Um, you can use it for anything. Uh, or chop, just chop it in the oven, bake it and mix it in with the salad. Uh, you can do the same with the belly. Same thing, it's gonna be cured way too quick. So we're just gonna cut off the fatty bit. And then again, just slide it across. Of that. Oh. As I mentioned, uh, it's a little bit smaller than the rest of the card. The, when, I, when I do the cure, it's pretty much the same basic method you use for any kind of curing you're doing. As we're just going to lift this to the tray. Turn this cutting board around. So first we're gonna start with the salt. I, there is, again, like I mentioned last time, as many ways of curing a salmon as these recipes for results in Australia. Um, the classic recipe I have is the most common from Denmark. Uh, it is about 60 uh, grams of salt. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, just normal kitchen salt. Um, all it's doing is pulling out uh, the fat and the water in the salmon so the flavors can go back in. So that's why I just use very normal salt. It's very quick. So you just spread it out evenly. And then the little bit you have left, put it on where it's most thick. So up here on the top bit, closest to the back of the fish top of the dish. Again, I'm not going to use it all because it is a little bit smaller today. Then I'm going to add the sugar. Again, just normal, normal sugar. It doesn't need to be anything special. Again, a bit more where the salmon filter is really thick. Then the fennel powder, um, I normally uh, always use uh, whole fennel. It's better, best to use the whole fennel seeds. Uh, give them a quick uh, saute on a dry pan. You'll get the flavors out there. 
let it chill and then you put it in a grinder and grind it really well. Use the old retired coffee grinder. They are excellent for that. As long as you don't use the coffee again afterwards because then it's not very nice. So I have an old one in the kitchen. I use for herbs and spices like this, chili and fennels and peppercorns and whatever we want to use because it is better to use the whole seeds than buying the powder. You never know what's in there. So I've done that earlier. So we just a very gen generous of fennel here. And right here to a little bit extra where the salmon is a little bit extra thick. Then to finish off with, uh, we're gonna put some freshly chopped uh, dill on. I would use about um, about two bunches, one and a half bunch, two bunches for, for this salmon. Um, so we're gonna chop uh, the bottom of the of the dill and use for the marinade, and then the top we're gonna use for the dressing and for when you take it out of the fridge after three days and clean it up, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'm just chopping this fairly, it doesn't need to be super fine. Um, you can also use dry yield, that's actually very much used in, uh, in Scandinavia because Deal, you know, back when this recipe was made, there was only deal for a very short time at summer. Um, so therefore, and this is a recipe that's especially used a lot around Christmas and Christmas in Denmark is, you know, when it's really cold in winter. So you can use with success the dried deal. If you use the dried deal, I would recommend it only when you cure it, not when you actually taking all the marinades off and then slicing it afterwards because it is a bit more permanent. So you can put a bit on if you like. It will get a bit more of a kernel and seedy flavor because it is a bit more sharp. And then you just put on the salmon, you put on all of the chopped stalks. Like that, and then you just chop off the top of the deal of the dressing. So put on with the one I prepared a bit earlier, three days ago. You can do this recipe cured fish with many other uh, in many other way, shapes, and forms. Uh, you start. You just do the same thing. About sixty gram of salt and sugar. And then you can add on a lot of different things. A very popular one we actually had on the menu as well down here was the vodka and beef fruit. So you just uh, put on the grated beef fruit on top of the salt and the sugar. And then you drizzle it with vodka. Another favorite one of mine is the lime and fresh fennel. Again, salt and sugar on. And then some raw, very fine shaped fennel, and uh, lots of slices of lime. Don't put the lime on first. If you use a really acidic thing, it will burn the salmon. It'll go quite white on top. So if you want to use orange or lemon or lime, make sure you put some herbs or some vegetables on first. So now we have the still. Let me just get. So, um, so just to uh, to recap, uh, a side of salmon, we uh, clean it up, make sure there's no bones in it, and I didn't mention the. Uh, always have skin on the bottom, you will keep it better together and you will find it much, much easier to slice it. Salt sugar on, the fennel, 
the fennel powder, and then the chopped peel. And then what this goes, it goes in the fridge for about three days. So if you're cooking with me now, that means it will be ready on Sunday, uh, Monday, public holiday, good timing. And um, put it in a fridge, again, when, as we talked about, with the mussels that we want to keep for a few days. This needs to be in a fridge that is not opened all the time. So the one in the garage that you use for beers when you have a barbecue, the fridge that is not opened all the time by the kids, that's where you need to put this, cover it up and put it in the fridge for, I would say, minimum three days. That over here. Then we have one here that um, we have prepared earlier. And we also need to make a dressing that I'm going to use for all of the recipes. So why don't we do that first? Uh, the dressing that I put in the recipe card as well is what we call Vaevisops in Denmark. It's a really good combination because it is a quite of a fat fish and so this will give it a bit of a sharp edge to it and as i said really easy so it's the same amount of brown sugar as Dijon. so if you put in about 100 ml of brown brown sugar you're pushed in really well for 100 ml 100 ml sorry and then about 100 ml of Dijon mustard <laughs> Just mix it well together. And then a bit of the, the fresh steel that we just chopped. Just a few spoonfuls. So just give that a really good mix. Very simple. Same amount of Dijon mustard as brown sugar. And then just mix it in. Make sure there's no lumps. And as I said, it was called bayo sauce, which is a bit of a, a bit of sharp dressing, which I really enjoy with it. Just gonna see if I can put it in this shell here without making too much of so I like to use it for, especially when I do the canapes and when I do the entree. You can also use this dressing for, for glazed ham. It goes really well with glazed ham or any kind of cured, cured meats. So back to the salmon. So this has been in the fridge for three and a half days. You can see how the liquid has started to come out and the flavor from the dill and the fennel have started to sink in. If you notice the color on the salmon earlier, now when I'm scraping this aside, you'll notice that it has started to go a little bit darker. And that means that the flavors have started to intense, intensify a bit. So, so when I spread this off, see, and you can also feel that the salmon is not that raw, soft feeling anymore. So it has started to burn up and the flavors have started to come in. So you just spread that off. You don't need to clean it off, you know, 100% because it is just salt, sugar, dill, fennel. So, but I like to get most of it all. Then what we do is get the fresh dill. And we give that just a nice 
now. And then I like to just add it on just a little bit further. So just It's about one and a half punch of steel I did there. As I mentioned, use the fresh steel here the second time around, not the dry steel. So, so now we're ready to slice the steel, uh, the ground lux, just a mess with. To cut the salmon, you need a salmon knife or you need something that's really sharp and really thin. If you use a knife that's really thick, you will kind of, the salmon will kind of fall apart when you slice it. And when you have a knife that is very thin, then you can slice it very thin. We have a saying in Denmark you need to be able to write a, or, or read a love letter through the slices. So, because that's apparently written with a very soft hand. So that's what you're supposed to. If you get to this point and you don't at all, you can't slice it really thin, you know, you just put less on the plate um, or you could do the tetsuya way and you just cut it straight down. And you just give you like a finger kind of a slice in the middle of the plate put the garnish around. I'm going to show you where you put several, several slices on, on the plate, use it like that. Um, we've had many fights over the years with Sweden. And one of the things the Danes and the Swedes are, are fighting about is who came up with gravel blocks. And of course there was the Danes. Um, the uh, gravelax come, came up, come, comes from the gravel, which means dig down, because when this recipe came around, there was, of course, no fridges or anything like that. So what we did, we marinated, we cured it, and we then dug a hole in the ground, five feet down, and then we could kind of have it in caves like that. And that way it was kept, was kept cold. So you just cut, I'm gonna try not to do it too quick, but you just cut thin slices. You can, if you wanna, some of the, I'm gonna show you how to do a canopy and of course we need some of the smaller slices for that. With the picnic and the breakfast, you can use the, the bigger slices. And for the entree, I like to cut it a little bit more of a, a hard angle so we can get several slices on and we can still get some of the other ingredients on the plate as well. Hmm? Yeah, so I'm cutting down to the skin. Uh, so the skin is, as you can see here on the, on the cutting board, um, ask your um, the way you buy the fish to actually to descale it. Yeah. The, the, the pieces you buy at Combs and Woolworths is actually descaled as well. So um, you don't have to, to worry about that. But as I mentioned, when you have the skin on, you can see the fish is not moving at all. It's kind of firm on the cutting board. It makes it so much, so much easier to slice. So I think we have about enough here. Uh, this gravel latch you can actually with the success uh, freeze down. Uh, freeze it down just before, uh, when you have marinated it for three days, when you take off all the salt and the sugar and the fennel and the dill, then you can freeze it down. And it is good to put in the freezer for about 
I would say maximum three months if you have it at a freezer that is always below minus 19. And if, if that's if you do a whole side and just the two of you or the four of you, you can do it that way. If you want to slice it and eat it over a few days, I would say maximum three days. If you have a cryovac machine, you can successfully cryovac it and just have it for one or two more days. But I would prefer if you use it fresh and if you know you're not going to use it, then freeze it down. And then when you take it out of the freezer, that's when you put the fresh dill on. So it's nice and green. If you put the dill on first and then freeze it down, the dill will go up at like a brownish color and it won't be that nice. So I think we have plenty here. So I'm just going to put this away. So what we're gonna be doing now, we're gonna show a few different uh, options to use the grab lux. We're gonna, we're gonna do a breakfast, a breakfast idea for you, which have been on the uh, breakfast special a few times. We, we, we have to put it on, actually repeat it a few times because we had so many requests. We're gonna do a cute little canapé that you can serve before a barbecue or serve before your picnic. And I'm going to do you a very simple but elegant entree. And then last, um, how you can add it to a picnic basket. Uh, so you can show off all your friends what you have learned here in lockdown. Uh, it's, a, it's a great little thing. And as I mentioned, um, with this salmon I showed was um, about a kilo, a little bit over a kilo. You can buy the small single serve at Coles and Woolies. But just then, I would say for a normal slot, a normal piece you get at Coles and Woolworths, just use about 20 grams of salt and sugar, and that should be fine. So we'll start with uh, we'll start with the breakfast. So So this is all things that, you know, on a Sunday or Monday when the salmon is marinated, you cut it up, you can use it for any of these ideas. And there are many more ideas you can, you can use it for, but this is just a few of them. So with this idea, we have a, a piece of toasted sourdough. You put on some, uh, some smashed avocado. Yeah. You can make it a dark lane. Of course, you're going to put lots of chili in this, but I like to make it a bit more mild because it is going with a pure salmon, which is quite of an elegant flavor. Put on some of your favorite salad leaves because I find it goes really well. It's kind of crunchy. Then we'll put on some rather lax. Just put on, twist them a little bit. You can spread them out as much as you want. I think four or five pieces would do the trick. Then um, I'll add some pickled onions. I think that goes really well uh, with this because it has a little bit of a bite as well. It's a very easy way of, uh, of doing pickled onions. Half vinegar, half sugar, boil it, pour it over the onions, which you have sliced, that's it. And they will last in the fridge for a month. And they have a really nice crunchy flavor to it. And they have a, have a gorgeous color as well. So put a few of these on and you can add some peppercorns. You can add some, I've added some bay leaves here from my garden, just to give a little bit more flavor. They will give a little bit of a crunch and a little bit of soundness as well. Stick them together. 
בסדר? I like to add a, a poached egg. Of course, I poached this beforehand, so it's not warm, but add a poached egg on top and add two. A little bit of salsa, tomato salsa, with a little bit of parsley, Spanish onions. Go a little bit over the plate, that's fine. A little bit of dill. And then, of course, the, the dressing that I made before, which was half Dijon mustard, half brown sugar, and a bit of fresh tofu. So we just give a little bit of this on. And then you have a bit of a breakfast special to impress your friends with, with the dill pill salmon that you made yourself. Here we go. Toasted sourdough, fried lax. Smashed avocado, some pickled onions, a bit of crunch, some salsa, and um, and the dressing on. Then, um, as we talked about, I'll do the the canapé. So, have a bit of a. I'll put these in ways. I've toasted some uh, baguettes here. You can cut up some bread, do rye bread, um, whatever you like. I'll take the dressing here just to use a little bit as a glue. Put a little salad leaf on. I like to put a green leaf on that makes the salmon pop a little bit more. And here we then, as I talked about, let's use the smaller pieces up here at the top. Just twist it around and make a little, make a little rose to put on. Just a little bit of dressing on top. Some salmon eggs just to make it pop again. Okay. And a little bit of Let's go. And there you have a little to start a dinner party with. Um, for this canapé to start with, because it's such an elegant thing, I would um, recommend a really good champagne. Um, a bit like the Pipehensic is a, a really nice champagne. It, again, it's a very elegant champagne. It uh, has a hint of, of lime, a hint of strawberry. A little bit of earthy flavors as well, which will go well with these rather black. So I would say that's a that's a beautiful combination to, to go with for that. I'll just pop this over here. Then I'll show you a really elegant uh, entree, and it's the slices of salmon with you can pre out with you know whatever herbs you have in the garden. Whatever herbs are in, in season. So put on a few slices, just a bit random on the plate. I'll just take some bit smaller slices. With the smaller pieces, so we just put them like that. Put a little bit of the dressing on again, just a few dots here and there. I 
I like to use a little bit of target radish. It will give it a bit of funny textures and, and also a bit of color. And again, just put them on a little bit random on now. So a few edible flowers. They are coming into season again now. Put them on. This is some um, baby celery. Kind of microbes. They are again coming into season now. There's some um, beautiful. This is, as I said, baby celery. There's also some baby coriander has also come into season now. Put them on. Then I've toasted off a little bit of the rye bread. It's a very famous thing, and it also gives a bit of a, a crunch to the to the entree. So do a few of those. As I said, you can use whatever is available at the vegetable shop of micro herbs or edible flowers. You can use dill, but we've used that a lot tonight, so I won't add that. And um, a little bit of salmon eggs. Then you can put a little bit of olive oil on, or I have a little bit of, of dill oil. I said it wouldn't be still now, I'm using it anyway. Uh, so just a little bit of, of green oil. There we go. That looks um, really pretty, and it is really simple. Um, just the salmon on, the dressing on, put some herbs, some edible flowers, salmon eggs, you can use other kinds of caviar, and that way, you know, put in some crunchy things. So then if you don't have rye bread, you can use normal bread croutons. Um, and for this, I talked to Marina, and um, we thought it would be good to pair it with the French uh, rosé that we have here at the club. It is uh, from very close to the Mediterranean, from the Provence area. And uh, Marina is selling it in the lockdown bottle shop for $27, which is a great value. And it is it's, it's a very fruity, very mild flavor, and it will go very well with the, with the salmon. And um, yeah, a bit of hickle lemon as well. So that would be a good choice. And, uh, for sale here at the box shop. So last, we will try and uh, make be able to impress your friends with a picnic box. So you can, I have taken a few things that we uh, have here or have here at the fridge, I have here at the club, getting ready for, um, for the opening up. Yes, but just before we get onto that, quick yeah. question from Roland. Yes. Who says, Sometimes puts in juniper berries and yes. sometimes a splash of vodka. Yes. Is that a good idea? Uh, absolutely. As I said, there is many ways of making brown lux. And with the juniper berries, that is definitely something that we have done before. It's more of a Swedish thing uh, with the use of berries for entrees and for mains. But definitely, juniper berry gives it a bit more of a punch, a bit more of an earthy. Uh, flavor and also with the vodka, it actually speeds up the, the curing because of, of the alcohol. So when you start putting vodka or anything that has that, you know, 30, 40% alcohol, that will really speed up the process. So yeah, please let the question come if there are any more. So what I've done here is at the moment, we can do picnics for five people. So I'm gonna, Mix up, mix some things together here. You can use whatever you have. I have some cold meats, 
I have some dolmadas, I have prawns, some oysters, some cheeses, some olives, some dips. And, you know, that's all things you can buy in, but, you know, just to make it that little bit extra special, you can then add the gravid lux uh, to this. So again, just twist some, some roses around, place them down here, and you can impress your friends saying, actually, I made this myself. And that way, it will definitely impress it up. I'm actually going to draw out um, a name out of a barrel for uh, a lucky winner that's watching tonight who can, uh, who can come and pick one of these up uh, as a prize, as a thank you for watching. So I have, this is for five, uh, of course, if you're five men, that might not be enough, but that's definitely a little bit for everyone for like lunch, you know, with a glass of a champagne or a glass of rosé. So put that in there, a little bit of dressing on. Oh, see if there's any left there, it's a little, little bit of dressing on. A little bit of dried fruit here for the cheese. And uh, a little bit of fresh dill. And I uh, always like to give everything a bit of a crunch. And here's some, some, some uh, sorry, some pumpkin seeds that are toasted off with salt that give you the bread. It's also really good with the cheese. So um, that's another way of, uh, of using the gravel lux uh, to press your friends in a picnic box. So just to, uh, to recap what we have done here today, you can cure the salmon today or tomorrow uh, with the salt and sugar, the fennel and the dill. Put it in the fridge and in three to four days time, it will be ready to slice. You can slice it there or you can freeze it down. So today we made uh, the, the breakfast, which was gravelax and smashed avocado, cross lettuce, a bit of salsa, poached egg and a bit of dressing and some pickled onion. Pickled onion, just half vinegar, half sugar, boil it, pour it over, last for a month at least. We did the little canapé, which would uh, go well with the pipe hensic. A little bit of dressing, the salmon. You can use the small pieces that when you start slicing and you don't get it quite right and they're really small, use it for small things like this, or use it for small things like the pasta. You can very easily turn that into a pasta if you slice it and eat it and you don't get it really right to start with. And then we made a really simple but very pretty entree. So the slices of salmon, little bit of dressing around, whatever micro herb, edible flowers you can get, a bit of toasted bread just for some crunch, and a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of, I used to put a bit of dill oil. And then last but not least, um, add it to a picnic box, add it to an anti-pasto platter, add it to, you know, whatever you like. Um, you know, when you have the cheese platter and put out the snacks at night, a few of these pieces, you know, you can even, you know, add it to a, a few croutons with a bit of dressing and, uh, and that way, use it that way. And here you can put a lid on, and then tomorrow you're ready to go out for your picnic. Um, I just want to mention that uh, for upcoming events uh, down here, we have, of course, our failure that we are doing next Saturday, which we've done every Saturday uh, during lockdown. Um, so we'll do that next uh, Saturday, and then for the last time, the Saturday after. Uh, but more importantly, and uh, what I'm more excited to talk about is, of course, our opening on Monday, the 11th of October. We are all so excited and we have come up with a new menu uh, with some of the good old classics that you all love so much and a few new things and a few new twists and turns. So we are very much looking forward to, 
to seeing you back on Wednesday the 11th. Um, so what I would like to do is um, I would like to draw uh, who is going to win uh, the, the picnic uh, hamper. It's not going to be this one. I'm going to make you a fresh one, don't worry. Um, so I'll draw out the name and uh, let's see who the lucky winner is. Kirsten Buckman. So Kirsten, uh, you're the lucky winner of this, uh, not this one, but a beautiful hamper like this. I would uh, love to make it to you whenever you can come and pick it up, just get in contact with the team. Uh, and uh, we'll have it ready for you to pick up or if you like to pick it up after the 11th of October, we can of course uh, wait until then. And I also like to say that uh, the club is also donating a beautiful French rosé to, to go with that. So uh, Kirsten, uh, let me know when you are, are ready to come and pick this up and uh, we'll have it ready. So um, again, thank you so much for all the members, uh, clients and uh, staff for uh, tuning in tonight. Um, and thank you for the CYC staff to make this happen and the club. Uh, so I'd just like to say goodnight and uh, look forward to seeing you again uh, from the 11th of October. Thank you very much.